I think that that is, there's something that's important to me about that. But I've met other founders, certainly, that have a similar approach to the world. You just want to create. You want that intrinsic value of creation. In business, you get a lot more paintbrushes uh, with business. But the business itself is one of the paintbrushes. What if you put humility to the side? I, it's interesting for me when I've talked to people that have reached a certain level of success um, that I almost get the sense that there's this reticence to, in essence, evolve with that success, define it how you might. Um, because if they change sort of, if they even tinker with their constitution, even if they could, would they risk a backslide from the very success that they had worked so hard to achieve? How do you square that? How do you think about that being the 10 year old Aaron to the, the guy that's in front of me right now, when you think about either changing the way you, you operate or integrating in confidence in a way that maybe you hadn't in the past because you felt good being humble and you feel like that's just been, it served you well, you know, are you a golfer that changes his swing sort of mid career, uh, like a Johnny Miller and doesn't see the success maybe that he had earlier. How do you think about that? And how do you maintain sort of this consistent level of acceptance of who you are and where you're going? Yeah, that is a good question. I think there is always that fear because I, I think there is a sense that you know you have something in you that allows you to do what you do. And it is special and you don't want to damage it. And maybe by changing a bit of who you are, you will lose that thing. Now, for me, I think the biggest difference that I've found is I, I have what I like to tell uh, the undergrads that I speak to, statistical confidence. You know, when I was younger, I was extremely cautious, like even as a skier, like as a kid, you know, my older sister was just like so daring and just going <laughs> off jumps. And here I am just like trundling down the hill, like not falling, you know, <laughs> um, but what I realized is, you know, a lot of people sort of have a very thin type of confidence, right? It's sort of a lot of bluster, this sort of thing. And I, I think it does work. I think it makes up for insecurities. What I've ended up with is I've done a lot of stuff. Um, a great many things have not gone well. A great many things have gone well. So when I have to estimate whether something will go well, whether I'm confident in it, I have statistical confidence where I can look back and say, well, you've made the right decision a lot of times. It's highly likely this is the correct decision. Now, hysteresis isn't the perfect way to go about things. But what it does do is make you very immune to insults, right? Because mm -hmm. there's plenty of people out there who will say, you're a bad person, right? Like, what are you, what are you doing in education? Are you trying to upend education and make things worse? I feel like it's pretty obvious, no, but like, you know, people are, are entitled to their opinion, but when you have a statistical confidence, you just don't feel it in the same way. You know, they say, oh, you're, you're bad at whatever. And you look back on your life and you just say, I mean, just from a probabilistic standpoint, no. And I have a lot of confidence in, in probabilities and discrete mathematics. One of my degrees is in computer science. Um, so I, I think I have gained that type of confidence. I think when it comes to things like just accepting compliments and stuff, I don't know. I'm sure that's some sort of personality disorder or something. Um, 